Have you stopped putting in effort at work? Is it hard to be interested or excited about what you do? Or are you exhausted and is your performance suffering? Well, it sounds like you might just be burned out. In this episode, I'm going to talk about what burnout is, the difference between burnout and stress, and discuss some of the symptoms and ways to overcome it. Later, I'm going to sit down with Patty Roush, Director of Career Programs at LI. My name is Tiffany Roberts from the Leadership Institute, and you're listening to the Lead Your Future podcast. Are you interested in running for office? Want to work on a campaign? At the Leadership Institute, it is our mission to increase the effectiveness of conservative activists and leaders in the public policy process. We offer over 40 different trainings, including campaign management school, on-camera TV trainings, and writing workshops. If you want to make a difference in public policy, visit leadershipinstitute.org. That's leadershipinstitute.org. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the sixth episode of the Lead Your Future podcast. So today we're talking about burnout. What is it and how does it happen? Burnout is emotional exhaustion. It's when you feel so depleted and drained that you just don't have anything left to give your job. Burnout is the accumulation of unchecked and built up stress over a period of time. You can kind of think about burnout as the larger, meaner, older brother of stress. Burnout can feel like an accumulation of decades of stress where it doesn't seem to be an end in sight. Healthcare workers and teachers actually seem to have the highest burnout rates in the United States. In some instances, burnout has been called the epidemic of the modern workplace. So what are some symptoms of burnout? Some can include demotivation and detachment from your work, a sense of ineffectiveness and lack of accomplishment, depleted energy levels, a pessimistic outlook on your work life, a desire to drop out of society, sometimes a complete neglect of personal needs, feeling empty inside, self-doubt, self-isolation, and if left unchecked, burnout can lead to depression, memory loss, alcohol abuse, sleep problems, weakened immune systems, and our job performance suffers. We make so many mistakes that eventually we just think about quitting. So something I learned during my research is there is a difference between burnout and stress. Although it is a fine line and sometimes blurry, there is a difference. In a blog post written by Dr. Craig Dyke, who has his doctorate in clinical psychology, he stated that sometimes it is difficult to know where normal stress stops and where burnout begins. With stress, there can be an end in sight, but getting there may be difficult. Burnout, on the other hand, is a cycle of negative emotions and withdrawal that can result from investing too much time into something emotionally, intellectually, or physically without doing anything to restore yourself. Burnout, therefore, does not develop without stress. But the other way around, it is possible for stress to form without ending up being a burnout. And burnout was actually recently recognized by the World Health Organization, which shows us that Stress is not a disorder in itself, but burnout is. It is even hardly possible to have an existence completely without stress. Everyone experiences stress sometimes. Burnout, however, is a disorder. Burnout can namely make it so that you are no longer the person who you want to be or who you used to be. Now, when we get to overcoming burnout, something really important to take note of. First and foremost, something that I was actually really surprised to learn was that it isn't really an individual problem. It's an organizational problem. So that means it's up to your workplace to help fix the burnout that you're experiencing. As stated by organizational psychologist Adam Grant, burnout is not in your head. It's in your circumstances. Since workplaces are responsible for the causes, they need to take responsibility for the cures. In an organization, you can reduce burnout with demand, control, support. This is Adam's favorite model that focuses on three strategies. Reduce the demands of a job, give people more control to manage them, and provide more support to help them cope. So if you're a leader in an organization, take note of this model because this is something that you can implement within your organization. 
Unfortunately, sometimes it's still up to the individual to fix. So the second weapon you have for overcoming burnout is focus on meaning. In life, sometimes it's easy to go day to day to your job and not really care too much or worry too much about what effect you're making in this world. But in this instance, it can become really important. We have to find a way to do the right work that will infuse our lives and work with meaning, service, and significance. One of the most common causes of burnout, it turns out, is not filling up our lives with deeper meaning and genuine connection with others. So maybe ask yourself, are your work and life infused with purpose and fulfillment? Or do you have a vision of the life that you're working toward? Do you bring your values, strengths, and passions to work, or do you just leave them at home? A business leader, social entrepreneur, and bestseller author, Bob Bufford, talks about the smoldering discontent that many workers feel today, realizing they have spent decades building lives of success, but with no significance whatsoever. So, you can take ownership of your situation and find ways to integrate your values, strengths, and passions into your work while, of course, meeting your performance expectations at the same time, so that you achieve not only success, but also significance. Adam Grant also said, The strongest buffer against burnout seems to be a sense of daily progress. We feel rejuvenated when we move forward on our goals and help others achieve theirs as well. I just love this statement, because it sounds like something that is doable. Finding purpose in your daily life, no matter how small it may be, In the world we live in, the smallest things can sometimes do so much and you don't even realize it. Also, an antidote to burnout is not necessarily less work. It could just be more meaning. So let yourself step out of the grind for a little bit and see your impact. Maybe if you're a teacher, find a local foundation for kids that you can help volunteer at and teach underprivileged kids. Or... Maybe do you love animals, so foster an animal from your local shelter. Maybe sometimes it's about giving purpose to somebody else, but at the same time, it ends up giving purpose to you as well. Now, the third and final weapon I have for fighting burnout is take an inventory. So if you're the type of person who enjoys to make lists, this can be really helpful for you. So make a list of all the situations that cause you to feel stressed, anxious, worried, frustrated. Don't rush through it. It's it's not a race. It's a process. So you can even just take your time every day. Think of something different to add to your list that comes to mind. Next, on each item in the inventory, write down at least one way to modify that situation to reduce the stress and begin adding that to your daily routine. Now, this is something that's not going to happen overnight. It's a process, just like really anything in life. So take your time and just be consistent about what you're doing and what you're changing throughout your day. Lastly, I feel like this is the most important thing you can do. Don't be afraid to talk to someone. This can be a counselor, your close friend, or your spouse, but it always helps to get things off your chest. I know this is very true for me. It always helps to talk to someone or talk out loud to somebody else to understand how you're feeling and understand what you're struggling with every day. Now, don't go too far. After this quick break, I'm going to sit down with Patty Roush and talk about her own experiences with burnout and her recommendations for coping with it. My name is Tiffany Roberts from the Leadership Institute, and you're listening to the Lead Your Future podcast. Are you looking to launch your career? Do you want to gain real, professional experience while sharpening your media skills? Then apply today to be a studio's intern here at the Leadership Institute. As a studio's intern, you'll master Adobe programs and get behind the scenes access to media professions across the board. Just go to leadershipinstitute.org and click on the career tab to learn more. That's leadershipinstitute.org and click on the career tab to learn more. Hey everyone and welcome back. I am now joined with Patty Roush, the Director of Career Programs at the Leadership Institute. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited. 
Um, so can you kind of just give us a quick overview of what you do at the Leadership Institute and how long you've worked there? Sure thing. Uh, as you said, I'm the Director of Career Programs at LI, and that means that I am leading the Careers Division, and I'm also in charge of the Political and Fundraising Training Division, and I serve as the non-finance HR rep for LI, and I work with our executive team to update and draft new policies based on employee feedback. Uh, the careers division, we do everything from career consultations to trainings to help people get an edge on their job search. And we also run the intern program and conservativejobs.com. The political and fundraising training, that's our campaign management school, our future candidate school, and our comprehensive fundraising training. I've been at LI for 12 years. I just celebrated my 12th anniversary a couple weeks ago. And I was originally hired in the grassroots division, traveling the country, training activists and leaders how to win campaigns. And now I get to lead the team that helps place those people in the public policy process. It's a really great job and I love working at LI. That's awesome. It seems like you've done a lot and you do a lot at LI for sure. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a fun ride <laughs> and I'm not ready to get off anytime soon. That's awesome. Well, I think since you've been at LI for 12 years and you've done so much, I figured you'd be a good person to ask about burnout because I'm sure you've experienced it at one point in your career. So can you share with us a time you've possibly experienced burnout and how you overcame it? Yes, I, this is getting pretty vulnerable, but I think it's important to be vulnerable, especially when it comes to uh, the job search and working because you never want someone to feel like they're alone and they're the only person who's ever experienced this. So it's important to share your own experiences with others. So I took a leave of absence to work on a campaign uh, earlier in my time at LI, and it was much more stressful than previous campaigns that I had worked for. Uh, but I could handle that stress because I knew how to compartmentalize different issues and feelings and deal with one thing at a time, but also being able to juggle all those things at the same time. I thought that I was golden. Unfortunately, my grandmother, who I was very close with, passed away a couple weeks out from election day. And for lack of a better term, it just wrecked me. Uh, the stress quickly turned to burnout. My emotions took hold. I went through the motions, but my heart was not in what I was doing. Election day passed and I went back to my normal job at LI. The problem was is that I couldn't get back into it as much as I tried. I love traveling. I love meeting with new activists and training them before this all happened. And I just couldn't get that feeling back. I ended up talking to a supervisor and we devised a plan that set me up with a new role that would help me refocus my talents and also give me a new challenge that might breathe new life into me. More importantly, the supervisor gave me some breathing room to deal because he knew this wasn't likely the permanent new me and was a very temporary me. And by God's grace, it worked and I was able to jump back into things with enthusiasm. And nine years later, here I am still at LI. So it's, it is possible. And even though it feels like you're in the, a very deep, dark place, you can get out of it is that burnout is temporary. It's, you have, you have a, a nice light inside of you that can't be distinguished for that long. Exactly. Wow. I love, I love that story. I think what's something that's really important that you kind of recognize was how your supervisor was able to help you through that. Because I mean, the World Health Organization, they classify this as a disorder, but it's not, it's not the individual's fault necessarily, or it's not just solely up to them that it's a big part in the organization to be able to figure out a way to help their employees through burnout. And that's something it seems like your supervisor did a great job of working with you, you know, giving you that space. It's so important. Yeah, absolutely correct. Is that when you're dealing with burnout, it's yes, it is affecting you, the individual, but it's also affecting the entirety of the organization or the company you work for. 
And one person doesn't have as many resources as a whole company or organization. So it's smart for the company and org to utilize their resources and be a bit more understanding about the individual. Now, have you ever been in the place of your supervisor where you've had a help uh, an employee through burnout or help them through a stressful situation? Absolutely. Um, and I won't get into specifics just because uh, I don't want anyone to ever think that I'm speaking about their experience and them coming to me uh, and trusting trusting me to, to keep that between us. But I've definitely had folks come to me when they're experiencing burnout. And the most common things I hear are I can't do it and I don't even care anymore and that just breaks my heart it makes me so sad for them because I know that feeling and it is a bad feeling and it's not something you wish upon anyone especially those who work for you and are part of your team but I also know there's hope for them because they are caring enough to seek help and guidance in that moment it's not a, a dire situation, even though it feels like it might be. And the best thing as a supervisor to remember is that employees have ups and downs. And part of our job is to recognize these times and provide support and resources to help the team succeed. Do they need some extra personal time? Do they need some things temporarily cleared off their plate? Do they need some duties permanently removed? And can you shuffle those to someone else looking for a new challenge? And the bottom line is you have options before you have to come to the realization that it might be time for that person to work somewhere else. If you invest time, talent, and treasure in one of your team members, you don't just want to throw that away because of burnout. If you can keep a talented person in a role, work with them to find a solution that works for your company. Now, that's a great point because um, everyone everyone is different. So it's important as a supervisor to figure out how to work with that person because everyone has different, different circumstances. There's different reasons why they're experiencing burnout. Um, now, what are, what are some things that you may experience, not even just with burnout, maybe just with stress? What are some things that you do to relieve your own burnout or stress in certain situations? My, my biggest stress relievers are long walks, long drives, and long nights of binge watching Schitt's Creek and other shows on Netflix. <laughs> and it is in that order. I love that show. It's a good show. <laughs> it's so good. I hope that no one thinks that I'm swearing. It is the name of the show. S-H-I-T-T apostrophe S. Um, it's, but sometimes it's really difficult to throw on a pair of sneakers when you aren't feeling your best. So I like to have some options. That's, you know, during stressful times, it's important for you to understand and remember what makes you happy and to have things to look forward to. I'm really lucky in that my husband and I both know what's good for each other and what makes each other happy. So if one of us is stressed and we can't focus on those good things, we help each other remember. Uh, get up and let's go for a walk is just another way to say I love you in our house. Uh, and if that doesn't work, let's go for a drive or just handing me the Apple TV remote <laughs> means the same thing. And when all else fails, it's okay to have a pizza and wine night. <laughs> to quote the inimitable show Parks and Rec, treat yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's perfect. I think that's something as a younger um, professional that I'm trying to work around is what are some things that cause stress or what are some things that I need to do to relieve that stress, especially just during the pandemic. It's sometimes some days I wake up, I'm like, well, what's like, well, I don't want to do this like all over again the next day and learning how to work around that and find those ways to relieve my stress, I find is, is a very important thing to do. And it's, keeps your self very healthy emotionally and physically. Absolutely. And sometimes it's okay to just lay in bed or lay on the couch and you shouldn't feel guilty about that, but you should never allow yourself to do that multiple days in a row. You do have to get up. You do have to get moving. You have to interact with other people. We are so lucky 
that we have the internet and apps where you can see people who you care about face to face, where if this happened 10, 20 years ago, we wouldn't have that. We are very lucky that it's happening now. Um, and we are trying to figure out what the new normal is. And I, I saw somebody say that you're not working from home. You are working in a crisis and figuring out how to do your work and actually make it happen. So it's okay to be stressed out, but try the, the best you can to just get moving. Don't allow yourself to just lay there for, for days on end. It's reach out for help. Your supervisors are going to help you. They want you to succeed. They want you to, to do good things and they don't want you to be sad. It's <laughs> so, so try to remember that. And I know it's so difficult to remember that in the moment. Uh, and now if you're not stressed out, write yourself a little post-it note and put it up there that this too shall pass. So when you are stressed out, you just look to those affirmations to remember that. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Patty. I, I think you've provided a lot of great insight um, and a lot of even gave me some more advice that I can use during my times in quarantine and when I'm stressed. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me, Tiffany. I think you're doing a phenomenal job with these podcasts and I look forward to listening to them all the time. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you everyone for listening to this episode of the Lead Your Future podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe, share, or leave a five-star rating wherever you get your podcasts. My name is Tiffany Roberts from the Leadership Institute, and you're listening to the Lead Your Future podcast. The Lead Your Future podcast is produced and edited by Tiffany Roberts with support from Jared Cummings. Advertisements by Alexander Chang and Christopher Olson. Executive produced by David Fenner and Morton Blackwell. If you want to learn more about the Leadership Institute and see behind the scenes photos, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and subscribe to Leadership Institute on YouTube.